Today I want to look at the assembly of the Forest West electric 450 logs cut-off saw uh, and look at how it's assembled and the best way to do it. Firstly, obviously, we need to open the box and you can see it's quite well packed and we will unpack that box and see what parts are here and uh, how is the best way to put it together. Once we've opened the box we can see that the uh, parts are, are loose inside so there's the main frame which includes the motor and the switch which the switch needs to be attached there's the table which is for mounting the log on which needs to be attached and the other factors also there's a uh, another group of parts wrapped in the uh, foam and inside that most importantly is the uh, manual and inside the manual uh, there is a page which has all of the uh, parts listed and as you, before you start uh, you would need to go to that page and just test, check to see that all of the parts that are shown there uh, are in the box which they should be and identify them. In this um, part is where your blade is and your blade can, um, covers. As you get started you should lay out the materials so that they're in a, a place where you know they are. Uh, in particular uh, you should lay out the, the bolts and small articles so that when you require them you can find them easily. The first thing I'm going to do is to put the wheels on. It doesn't indicate when they should go on but if they go on at this stage it should go on easily. Following that we'll stand the frame up um, and start hooking the um, other section to that. So let's do that now. Right, there are two sets of wheels and it's important that you get them on the right side. Uh, the flat part should follow down the frame. If you get the, the wrong one on the wrong side, obviously it points uh, in the wrong direction. So make sure you get the right one on the right side so it points down when you are looking at it. Right, once the wheels are on, we can start assembling the other frame. You'll need the um, 8mm these long bolts. If you pick up the internal friction and put this uh, linkage piece in position and slide the bolt through, that will allow you to and just put a washer on and loosely put a nut on. Do the other side and then you'll be able to stand the machine up at this point. So do the other side in the same manner and then we'll stand the machine up. Right, once it's standing up uh, we can get this section here which is supp called supporting leg A. That's called supporting leg B. We can remove this uh, nut again, make sure the washer stays in place and then uh, place this over the top washer on the outside and then the nut and that can be tightened not too tight because it's got to allow free movement of this section once it goes in place so it's got to be tightened uh, firmly but not too tight once the supporting legs have been uh, attached and they allows this to move freely I you can that is occurred because we have the uh, washer on the outside as well as in the middle of the of the uh, joints so it's important that one goes in the middle we're then ready to put on the switch so the switch mechanism mounts to the back of the motor plate uh, through these two holes here and that is done using the long uh, bolts here with the appropriate washers so we just position that and the actual thread back of the motor is threaded. Once we have put the switch in position and it's nice and firm, it's then time to put the spring into the guide tube. So to do that we release the uh, bolt at the end here, slide off one of the washers, spring back on, washer on, and then this is used to put back in when it's under this edge. 
So it's a matter of lifting this, putting it through the hole, dropping this into the hole that remains and putting the uh, nut back onto the, um, the bolt uh, ready for use. And then that needs to be tightened and that will hold, then hold this in position and also spring back. And you'll notice that it springs back easily because we took care earlier to allow that to happen. Right, once we've tightened that, you'll notice that there are two holes here. If you choose the furthest hole like I have, the chain on the other side we're about to put on will need to go the, the furthest link. If you go to the second hole, it needs to shrink a link in. So once that's on and firm, and we're satisfied that this moves freely, uh, we then come around with these bolts, uh, bolt and nut and a washer, so the washer onto there, and the chain, and through this hole, which is your support for the table on this side. That can be tightened in position. And once you've tightened that, the handles need to go on. So these two handles, which will be positioned into the frame at the back here. So that's our next step after we've tightened this up. Once we've finished uh, fitting the handles, making sure they're firm, and that the whole assembly moves freely. We're then ready to move on to the motor section and assemble the guards that are associated with the blade. Best to lay them out so you can see what you've got. The outer guard is over the other side, the blade, the uh, inner gu blade guide, and the one we want to look at first is this one, uh, which attaches to the back of the uh, motor on, on these uh, bolts here. It's important when you remove this um, cover from the shaft that you are aware that there is um, it's important to make sure we don't knock it and uh, keep it clean and um, protected. With the four bolts removed from here these ones uh, we're then ready to place the uh, back section on in place which goes in over the top like that. Right, make sure that this section is in, in the front with that hole towards the front. That one's more like the easiest bolt to put in place first so that it steadies things and, and then one of these at the top here which will allow you to hold things. Uh, the other two bolts can then follow. Once you've fitted that in a guard, make sure it's good and tight. I used a uh, larger screwdriver, particularly on these uh, lower ones, so that I could get them nice and tight and make sure that the whole thing was nice and firm. The next section is to move on to the inner guards, which are these two here. So this is the one we want to start with. And to start with, we remove these two bolts, uh, which are Allen uh, screws so you will need an allen key uh, that um, fits uh, these bolts and then we'll place them in position so once you've got that uh, guard into position that's the inner guard which is attached to this tray um, the make sure that the uh, allen keys here are nice and tight so that they are firm then remove this bolt here, noting that there is another nut on the inside there, which is loose. So that loose nut remains in place because it's a spacer to allow this to move freely. So move this inner fraction, hook it on, make sure the washer goes on the outside, and just loosely tighten this uh, bolt in because it needs to be tightened with the spanner, but it's also got to make sure that this moves freely in and out without catching. So once you're satisfied that it moves uh, freely in and out, tighten it to such a stage that that still can occur. Once we're satisfied that that outer cover can move easily, we're then ready to put the blade on. So we have the blade, which has obviously marked arrows so that it turns downwards at the front. 
we have the two flanges and the tools to put it in. You'll notice that one of the flanges has crosses on it. That's the outer flange. This one is the inner flange, which we put on first, and it has a um, flat on it, and the flat corresponds to a flat which is on the motor here as well. So when you're putting it on, just locate that flat and make sure it fits uh, firmly through to the other end. When you're ready to put this on, locate where the flat is on the flange, the flat on the shaft, line them up, a bit of a wriggle and it should push on easily. The blade can then go on, making sure that the direction of cut is right and it fits over the top of that flange snugly so that the inner, it's sitting on the inner flange. This one can then push on, once again lining the flats up. Now that blade dropped down, I felt, felt it drop off, the, off the, the flange, so make sure that that stays in place when you put it on. Once it's there, you can then put your bolts on. And then these two devices, one is to hold the flange at the back and obviously this one to tighten it. So just a, a, a light tighten and make sure the, the blade is firm and is touching all the way around in here. And then once you're satisfied that is, you can put a bit of pressure on it and make sure it's good and tight. And there we are, the blade is now fitted. We're now ready to place the outside of this cover, which is this one here which once again we need to take these bolts out and use our allen head uh, um, key, allen key to uh, tighten these into position. When you're positioning this, uh, start the bolts down the bottom here with the uh, allen key and once they're still, when they're still quite loose, draw your attention to the top. Undo these two Phillips head screws need to just lever this out a little bit to get to it. Once they're out, and while this is loose down the bottom, these holes can be easily matched together, and uh, the screws can then go back in. Once all the screws are in, check to see that it's moving freely on the guide before you tighten them. Once you've tightened the screws which hold this in position, make sure once again that this moves in the center of the blade again so that it doesn't touch anything. The next step then is to put the outer cover on uh, which is this section here and to do that we use these bolts here. You'll notice that there's three of one size and two of another size. These two are to hold in position this plastic uh, cover which helps to prevent the sawdust coming out at you. So we position those in place and use those screws to fasten them uh, around the top of the um, bolt here. When you're putting this cover on, it's uh, best if you just start the screws, so that the three screws and then this last one up here. Uh, you'll notice this one here has a spring washer. The spring washer should always go against the head of the uh, screw and that being the last one can go into this hole here and while everything's loose uh, it shouldn't be too hard to get them all started and once you've got them all started uh, you can then tighten them with the appropriate screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver uh, and then check to see there it's all firm and moving accurately. Once you've got this part uh, fastened uh, you'll notice that this is very close to the end. If it is touching you need to come back down to this spring that we had earlier down the bottom um, and undo the bolt and you remember I said that there were two holes in that, that shaft so if you put it into the second hole of the shaft that will then prevent it from touching at the top so there's a gap in here but at the same time we need to check to see the chain at the other end uh, is tight and you, you can see at the moment it's loose so what we'll do is take that bolt off and tighten it into the next link. Once you have uh, tightened all those screws 
Once again, check to see this is all moving smoothly. It's then time to put in the cover for the front, uh, which is fastened onto this position, onto here with the appropriate screws. And once that's in place, we can then position the other, the other rods. This guide arm here slides into a slot at the back here. And these uh, knobs screw in to hold it into position. Just make sure that uh, comes in and out smoothly. And this one here is the guide to get your length if you're cutting any particular length and there is a knob which holds this one in position here uh, once you set up a length that you want to cut uh, according to the numbers on here you can then lock this in position so that you can slide your material through to the lock so we'll take this off again put this screw on and then we're just about done once you've tightened the screws to put this in position and the guides are in position it's then are completely assembled. Before you do anything though make sure once again that the blade is clear when you pull this up and down make sure all the bolts and screws that you've put in are tight put the uh, tools for tightening the blade and the manual in a safe place and whenever you use this machine always make sure you use gloves and earmuffs and whenever you start the machine always stand to one side of the blade so that if there's any bits of wood or chips throw out you're not in the line of flight happy using